Good morning, Las Vegas, and everyone tuning in online. You're now listening to The Jamie D Show. Woo! Welcome in. We're live on KSHP AM 1400 and 107.1 FM every Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. until 11 a.m. PST. Guys, it's Friday. Yay! Do you all remember that song? It's Friday, Friday. Got to get down on Friday. <laughs> Woo! That song had us lit when I was in, I think, high school or middle school. When did that song come out? Eh, I don't remember. But welcome in, everybody. So on today's show rundown, we have the news headlines of the day. We're going to discuss if relationships and marriages are actually 50-50. And founders of Built By, Kurt Walker and Eric Harris, join me live in studio to discuss startups, how to secure funding for your business, their business, and more. Super excited to have them in. You don't want to miss out on any segment. Make sure to tune in. Make sure to interact with me live on my YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, or Facebook at The Jamie D Show. Or call in at 702-221-7283 to get in the conversation. I see we have Naturally Radiant 2 saying, what's up, everybody? It's Friday live on YouTube. Welcome in, Naturally Radiant. I believe that's my soar of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated. Oh, yeah. All right, let's get into these news headlines of the day. So it is being rumored by so many different media outlets that Tyler Perry bought BET in VH1. However, this rumor is not confirmed as reported by Fox 5 Atlanta. If this rumor turns out to be true, though, this will be the first time in 21 years that black entertainment television, BET, will be owned by, will be black owned again. And the first time ever in VH1 history being black owned. As well, this will make Tyler Perry the first African-American man to own two major television networks. That is huge. Let's give him a round of applause. Hopefully you guys are able to hear that sound effect. Isn't that cute? <laughs> if you're not tuned into the YouTube at The Jamie D Show, you didn't see what I just did. So make sure to tune into my live video stream so that you can see the behind the scenes. Yes, what's up, GG? Welcome in. Naturally Radiant says, and is z -Fi. Oh, yeah. All right, in other news, a father pranks his family and friends by taking his own, faking his own death, and then showing up to his funeral in a helicopter. He says he felt unappreciated and wanted to teach them a lesson as reported by the Neighborhood Talk. Woo, sir. <laughs> you are going to piss a lot of people off. Now, if you all didn't see this video, he is of the Caucasian community. <laughs> and I got to just say it because, you know, I love connecting the dots. If this was in the black community, oh, oh, he would have got beat down. Oh, aunties, uncles, mamas, daddies would all be jumping on this man because how could you? <laughs> oh, he is so petty. There are so many ways to go about discussing with your family in a non-toxic way that you feel unappreciated. But this man went to the extreme. But people seemingly were happy that he was alive and they were running up to him. And I, oh, I guess it worked in his favor. I don't know. But I just know if this was in the black family, they would be beating him down. That same helicopter that dropped him off would have to airlift him to the hospital. Again, I don't condone violence, but <laughs> that's the truth. <laughs> oh, so... Former college football player Ray Lewis III, the son of Hall of Fame linebacker, backer, excuse me, the son of the, son, the wow, the son of Hall of Fame linebacker Ray Lewis has tragically passed away at the age of 28, as reported by TMZ. Details surrounding his death have not been released. May he rest in peace, and my condolences and prayers go out to the family. Again, this is Ray Lewis III, the former college football player and the son of Hall of Fame linebacker Ray Lewis. I'm sad to hear about his passing, especially at such a young age. Me and his son are actually around the same age. My birthday was just this past June 1st. And just to know that, yes, he lived the life, but didn't get to live his life to the fullest age wise is very saddening. So again, my condolences and may he rest in peace. All right, let's get into this nasty ish. Ugh. A Penn State professor has been arrested after performing sexual acts with this pet collie to blow off steam as reported by Daily Mail. Uh, uh, oh, y'all do know that a, a pet collie is a dog, right? Yes. 
I'm going to try to say this man's name right. Themis Matsukas, age, 60, age 64, was allegedly caught in the act on surveillance cameras by the bathrooms at Rock Rock State Forest, wearing a mask while half naked except for socks and shoes. After police tracked him down and showed up on his doorstep, Matsukas allegedly became visibly nervous before telling officers, what do I have to do to get you to shoot me? I need to die. There's a lot to unpack here. This is, oh, this is some nasty-ish. This is some weird-ish. And I'm flabbergasted at this entire story. Now, this Penn State professor is a scholar. And he has done a lot in the community. And apparently he is a role model to many. But, ooh, Themis, what is wrong with you? Oh, oh, okay. So th let's, let's, let's let's break down break this down a little bit. Excuse me for all my stutters today. I don't know what is going on with me. <laughs> Ooh, okay. So not only are you gross AF for having sex with your dog. Y'all do know how small a pet collie is, right? Y'all do know that animals don't wipe their own behinds and clean themselves out, right? That's one thing. But two, am I condoning this at all? Instead of doing this in the privacy of your own home so that you don't get caught, so that you can enjoy whatever nasty issue you're into securely, you went out into public with a mask on and just socks and shoes, nothing else, and had sexual relations with your pet dog. That is absolutely despicable. Ugh. Oh, oh, sir, you deserve to be in jail. And then you're saying that you want to die. I, I don't know if this was a cry for help. And that you did this on purpose to, to get punished. But there's so many other ways to seek help. Please, people, for the love of everything good, seek help. Ask for therapy. Ask for resources. Ask for help. And yes, I did say ask for therapy because a lot of people don't have the insurance to get therapy. So find, figure out what resources you can use. But there's so many ways to get help. You do not have to have sexual relations with your pets to blow off steam. Mm. As well, there are so many people out here in the world who would gladly have sexual relations with you. You are a revered professor at Penn State. And not even that, you're just a, you're a professor of chemical engineering. I know you got some money. I know there's some money in there somewhere. There's some women who will gladly take your cash. <laughs> I'm not condoning that, but I'm just saying, there's so many ways to get your rocks off and blow off steam. That poor dog, ew. All right, so I, I got to tell you about this story because, th th okay, this is juicy but also sad at the same time. Remember how I reported that there was a man who shot his friend to death in a Las Vegas Strip hotel room, right? Well, get into this update. The Las Vegas Review Journal reported that the murderer's girlfriend heard the two men fighting over a darn $20 gambling voucher. $20! This man shot his friend to death over $20. Y'all, you tell me you're that broke to kill your friend over a $20 gambling voucher? You broke behind. Y'all shooting and fighting in these people's hotels? Child, this is ghetto. If you can't go to Barcelona, uh, Bella Noche, then where the hell could you go? <laughs> I really hope y'all get that reference. And this all happened inside of the Excalibur. Wow, twenty dollars again. I don't condone violence, but twenty, a twenty piece. Oh, that's sad. That's sad. Ew. Oh gosh. In other Las Vegas news, Governor Lombardo signs Las Vegas A Stadium bill as reported by Fox Five Vegas. This is amazing for the community because this means that. We are one step closer to seeing the Las Vegas A stadium being built here. Now, what does this mean that he signed this bill? This is the Senate Bill 1, which states that they're going to now be giving funding to these individuals to create this baseball stadium. That's awesome. Now, what Governor Labardo stated was, I'm excited to officially sign SB1 this afternoon. This is an incredible opportunity to bring the A's to Nevada, and this legislation reflects months of negotiation between the team, the state, the county, and the league. Las Vegas' position as 
A global sports destination is only growing, and Major League Baseball is another tremendous asset for the city. Now, the Oakland A's released a statement saying, Today is a significant step forward in securing a new home for the athletics. We thank Nevada Governor Lombardo, legislative leaders, and Clark County commissioners and staff for their hard work, support, and partnership. We will now begin the process with MLB to apply for relocation to Las Vegas. We are excited about Southern Nevada's dynamic and vibrant professional sports scene, and we look forward to becoming a valued community member through jobs, economic development, and the quality of life and civic pride of a major league baseball team. Hey, go them. This means that they're one step closer and they just need to be relocated. So hopefully that also gets signed as well. There's rumors that they're looking to build the stadium where the Tropicana Hotel is after it's demolished. So we'll see. Hey, that has been the daily news headlines of the day. Again, the news headlines of the day. Stick around because we are going to talk if marriages are and relationships are 50-50. As well, we do have Kurt Walker and Eric Hayes, who are the founders of Built By. We're going to come in and talk about tech, startups, how to get your startup funded, and more. So don't go anywhere, okay? We're live on KSHP AM 1400 and 107.1 FM. This is the Jamie D Show. Even though they play each other like 19 times a year. Hungry for the best barbecue in Las Vegas? Come out to the infamous barbecue and meat market, John Moles Meats and Roadkill Grill in Las Vegas. John Moles was featured on the Food Network's Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives. Now take home delicious meat selections for your grill, and while you're there, grab a bite of the best barbecue in Las Vegas. With two locations now at Tom and Gowan or on North Decatur, you're sure to find the perfect meats for your next barbecue or party. Find us online at johnmolemeats.com. At AR Heating and Air Conditioning, our main goal is to provide high-quality service without breaking the bank. From maintaining your HVAC units to fixing them when they are down, they are there for you. AR Heating and Air Conditioning offer reasonable prices, reliability, and professional service at a great value. For more information, go to fixmyac.net or call 702-646-4000. Beat the heat and call AR Heating and Air Conditioning today. Welcome to Hash House A Go-Go, -Go, where we've been serving farm food and crafted cocktails for over two decades. Visit us for the full Hash House experience at any of our five Las Vegas locations. Hash House A Go-Go -Go is where old school meets new and gets twisted. We bring people together over good food and fun. Come in for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, and come hungry because our portions are huge. Visit us online to see our entire menu at hashhouseagogo.com. Hash House A Go-Go. -Go. It's a Midwest thing, and there's nothing else like it. Is your dog suffering from a sensitive stomach? Hi, it's Kelly the Cookie Lady from Mooch's Munchies. Our dogs had super sensitive tummies and I needed to find a low fat treat that wouldn't give them gas or other issues. Most of the treats on the market were loaded with fillers, chemicals, and chicken fat. Many of them weren't even food. Well, I knew I could do better, so I developed Mooch's Munchies and I'm happy to be able to share them with you. Stop by our store or our website, moochesmunchies.com and find out why we say that Mooch's Munchies are totally possum. What's up? Welcome back to the Jamie D Show. Woo! Again, welcome back. Super happy to have you all here on this live broadcast. We are live on KSHP AM 1400 and 107.1 FM every Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. until 11 a.m. PST. Before I get into this topic, I also want to let you all know this breaking news. Conor McGregor is actually being accused of sexually assaulting a woman at the NBA Finals game. It has been reported that he led a woman into the bathroom and forced her to give him fellatio in a bathroom stall. However, his team did come back out and make a statement saying that these claims are false. Hmm. <laughs> Today, they posted some videos of him leading this woman to the bathroom. So, hey, I, I don't know what to say, but what I will say is the truth always prevails. There's two sides of the story and there's always the truth as well and i want people to know stop victim shaming stop victim blaming and stop always thinking that people are lying however i will say this if you are a victim that is lying you are messing it up for other people who are seeking justice and seeking to be healed from their trauma please do not be putting people 
in these situations because you're money hungry, because you're seeking revenge, or because you're just an evil person. Please. There are so many victims out there who are who feel like they're not being seen. And when you are, if you are, and when you are lying about these situations, you make it harder for people to step up. So on both sides, don't be a jerk and victim shame these people and let them tell their truth. And if you are a victim, don't be a, a jerk. Don't lie. Be real. All right, let's get into this topic. Are relationships and marriages really 50-50? Oh, I'm ready for this. I'm ready. However, before I get into my part, I want to play this sound that I heard on Instagram. I'm going to play it for you right now. Pay attention, okay? Hold on, we're getting it queued up right now. So in the process of getting this queued up, I want to let you know what this video is about. It's a video on Instagram, and this lady who is talking about if marriages are really 50-50, what that truly looks like, and how it has worked in her marriage. And I want you all to hear what she has to say, because I think it's very, very interesting. Remember, you all are able to get involved in this conversation, so call us at 702-221-7283. Again, that's 702-221-7283, so that you're able to talk to me. I want you guys to get in this conversation. Now right, we're going to play it right now. Be 50-50. It's the biggest crock of bullshit I've ever heard. It's never 50-50. Yeah. Ever. And so what we do is we quantify where we are. So if Steve comes home and he'll be like, I got 20. Just in terms of energy. Just energy, investment, kindness, patience. I'm at a 20. And I'll be like, I'll cover you. I got you, brother. Like, I'll pull the 80. Sometimes we come home, which we have done a lot. My mom has been sick. And I'll say, I've got 10. And Steve, goes, like two days ago, said, I'm riding a solid 25. So we know that we have to sit down at the table anytime we have less than 100 combined and figure out a plan of kindness toward each other. Oh, I love that. Yeah, because the thing is, marriage is not something that's 50-50. A partnership works when you can carry their 20 or they can carry your 20. And that when you both just have 20, you have a plan where you don't yeah. hurt each other. So I find this to be extremely interesting. She's made a lot of great points in her Instagram video. Now, let's get into something she said. She said that it's about communication. It surely is. Relationships and marriages are all about communication. She also stated that this concept of 50-50 is a bunch of BS. Right on. Right on. I completely agree. Relationships can never be 50-50. Now, I'm going to explain that why in a little bit, but I also want to discuss what she was saying about having that conversation about, hey, this is 20, this is 80. Uh, hey, if that works for your marriage and your relationships, right on. You should have a system in place to where you're able to communicate with your partner your needs, your wants, your setbacks, what you can provide and what you can't provide. I support her. Everybody's relationship and marriage is different. So I truly want people to understand, don't judge somebody because the system that you hear works for them, but it won't work in your relationship. That is your relationship, not hers. And it's working for her. I will say it was kind of weird how she, she was like, I got your brother. Ew. <laughs> Don't you ever call me brother if we're married or in a relationship. That was just a, a little ick I had. But she, I think she was spinning some facts. Now let's get into how I personally view this. So let me break it down like this. In today's society, people usually equate relationships and marriages being 50-50 to money. And that's dumb. Hear me out again. People equate relationships being 50-50 to money. And I hate it. You want to know why I hate it? Because why are you focusing on the epitome of evil? Yes, money, I, I tell people this all the time. Money can't buy all happiness, but money can buy a lot of my happiness. So I, I would love to have a lot of money in my bank account. However, money can also be the source of evil if you're not cherishing it the correct way, nurturing it the correct way, and communicating with your partners about money the correct way. Now, why do I say people look at money as the 50-50 part of the relationships. Because people are always like, oh, if I take you out on one day, you should take me out on this day. Or if I pay for kids here, you should pay for kids there. Or if I pay for the shoes here, you should pay for the... Okay, shut up. I'm going to tell you why I say shut up. No matter what relationship you're in, whether it's a heterosexual or homosexual, whatever type of relationship it may be, provide for your partner. You know how you can provide and how, you, how they're asking to be provided for. So what does that mean? If you are the breadwinner and the person who has more, or the person who just maybe have more money in the, the relationship, and you could give 
then do so. What's the issue with giving money to your partner? Why do you have to always equate, I did this, you need to do this, to money? No, because a relationship is not always financial. But if you have it, give it. Because if you want to, you should. I tell people all the time, remember why you entered into a relationship or a marriage. And also remember how men, especially African-American men, were socially constructed to, to respond in relationships. We were told to be providers. We were told to make sure that we have sexual relations with our partners. And a lot of times we don't know how to communicate as African-American men or just men in general. A lot of times we don't know how to show up for our partners. A lot of times we don't know how to communicate. And a lot of times we can, not everybody, but a lot of people only provide money in their private parts. And if that's where you can start, then you should start nurturing that and then try to learn how to provide better and more and how your partner wants you to provide for them. So let's take a, a, another step back at this. Let's say you're in a relationship with a woman or a man, whoever you, you're interested in, and you have the money, right? I've seen several times in my own personal experience where somebody's reached out to another individual saying, let's go on a date. And they're like, okay. And the person responds like, okay, cool. Like, where would you like to go? And this person says, it's up to you. Now, the person with the money or the person who invited the person out never tells them where they want to go, ask them for their interest, try to set up a time, try to set up a day. But the person that was asked is setting up the time, asking when that person is free, taking themselves there, showing that person new experience and keeping the conversation going. And all this other person did was ask him on a date, but didn't put any involvement into the planning. I really want people to know that is a part of the process. That is also providing. If you are telling somebody how, you know, telling somebody your interest, communicating, freaking literally holding the date. <laughs> when I say holding the date, I mean, you're literally the person who put the date together. You're the person who's communicating throughout the entire date. You're the person who's providing this new experience and all this other person has to do is pay. There's nothing wrong with that. That actually is providing. It may not be 50-50, but you're gaining something from this new individual you're taking on a date. So for you to be like, well, I want you to pay too, or I want you to pay for your own meal. It's kind of just like, what are you bringing to this date? I've been on uh, dates lots of times where the person I'm talking to can't communicate, doesn't know how to keep a conversation going, didn't even ask my interest, has never been to this restaurant, doesn't do much in their life, and I'm showing them a whole new experience, and they still want me to either pay or they want me to go 50-50 on the bill. And it's kind of like, you didn't do nothing. You didn't do nothing. Y you're gaining from this, and I'm not. <laughs> so I tell people all the time, if you're looking at it from a money standpoint, see what you're also gaining from that individual. You can be gaining communication skills. You can be gaining new experiences. You can be gaining a new outlook on life. You can be gaining a, a, a partner who was there to be there for you spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and more, and you're too worried about money. If your partner is giving to you how they can, they're loving on you how they can, and they're showing up for you how you stated in the beginning, how you wanted them to show up for you, stop worrying about the minute things like money. I do understand that sometimes people feel used for their money and they're not getting anything back. That makes sense as to why you would bring this up to your partner. But other than that, stop worrying about dumb things like money. Tell me if you guys agree with me on, our, on the YouTube or call in at 702-221-7283. I want to know what your thoughts are because personally, I, be, I believe that we, we ruin a lot of relationships focusing only on money because it's not just a financial aspect. Again, a lot of times, and I challenge my men out there to realize we aren't really providing as much as we think we are outside of money and our private parts. A lot of us don't know how to communicate. A lot of us don't know how to show affection. A lot of us don't even pay attention to our partners when they say, hey, I want you to show up for us in this way. Let's talk to the, the heterosexual men out there. A lot of us don't realize it costs way more, way more than money for a woman to carry your kid, for a woman to nurture your kids, for a woman to be there for your kids. If you're focusing so much on your money, see what your woman or your partner is doing for you. Again, a lot of times men are only providing money and P in the P word, and your woman is handling how you pay for the finances. She's keeping the house and clean and making sure it's a home for you. She may be cooking or cleaning. She she or he may be providing you with new experiences. She or he is the is the, is the individual who is getting you out your comfort zone. You know, how many, you know how many people I've went on dates with who have never had seafood? 
man, you tell me you don't want to pay for this meal, but I got us to a seafood spot. I got us the manager special. I'm having a great conversation with you. I'm holding this date on my back, and you're telling me that you want me to pay you to provide nothing. Let's go back into these relationships. Again, we're also talking about now women. You are pushing your woman to be 50 50, but this woman is carrying your child. Do you know some women don't make it out alive after carrying your child? Pay attention. Do you know a lot of times women do way more than men and you're focusing on them providing you money? Let's also talk to our gay people out there. I know a lot of gay men who know how to provide like women. I don't mean sexually. I mean, I don't mean like as a woman per se. What I'm saying is like they removed the social construction out of reality away from their life and they rebuilt themselves and they provide in many other senses and ways outside of money and their private parts. And they're still talking to other men who are just like men like I know who are social constructed to only provide money in their private parts. And they're being forced into that ide ideology of 50-50 and paying too. Remember how you want to see yourself walk in the space you see yourself in and show up how you want to show up and do things out of the kindness of your heart that's the biggest issue i think we have in our community a lot of times we're not doing things out of the kindness of our hearts anymore we're doing things to receive something on the back end and that's not true love that's not true giving that's not being a true provider i challenge people to take a step back and to see why they got in a relationship in the beginning in the first place. See why they're even interested in this individual. And remember, if you can provide this way, do it. A lot of times, I'm gonna tell you this, men and women do just settle and accept your money and your PP because they love you for who they are and they see the potential in you. Even though they're probably providing way more physically, emotionally, spiritually, mentally than you are. But they're staying with you because they see the growth potential. They see how you could probably provide for them in those ways later in the future. And they love you. But you're too focused on the wrong things. Come on now. And, hey, there's nothing wrong with women, women providing. There's nothing wrong with you pulling out your card. But I just want you to understand that money is not the root of all providing. Money is not what it means for relationships to be 50-50. And relationships cannot be 50-50. That's a bunch of BS. Some days you're able to provide. Some days you're not. Some days you can show up. Some days you can't. Some days you have the money. Some days you don't. And it's okay. It's all about communication. Walk in that path of love, light, and security with your partner so that you're able to get the relationship you want. Stop paying attention to these social media influencers. Stop paying attention to these celebrities and stop getting on social media platforms and using that as your ideology and your example of what relationships should be like. Always communicate your wants and your feelings and get what you want out of life because that is how you're going to see yourself in a relationship that you want to be. Remember, folks, walk in the space you see yourself in. Again, walk in the space you see yourself in. You're only going to get what you want out of life if you communicate, manifest, and walk in the space you see yourself in. I love that you guys are commenting live on YouTube right now. Naturally Radiant says, sometimes my husband looks at me sideways because I'll pull out my card quick. He's a provider to his core. Hey, we're Naturally Radiant. If you want to pull out your card for me, I'm here. <laughs> Hey, call in at 702-221-7283. I love you guys so much. Thank you for tuning in. In this next segment, we have Kurt Walker and Eric Hayes, who are going to come in and tell you about their company, Built By. Because guess what? They're the founders. It's a community created to connect founders with one another. So stick around because you're not going to you're not going to miss a segment, okay? You're now listening to the Jamie D Show live on KSHP AM 1400 and 107.1 FM. Let's get into it. Stay there, okay? Premium CBD offers full and broad spectrum CBD oil, extracts, and capsules, which are designed to help you feel your best. Their products are sourced from the best organic hemp and natural ingredients on the market and are tested for quality, purity, and potency. They have a full range of items from health and wellness to beauty to pets. Call 725-205-9223, visit online at zinworld.com, or stop by their location at 9895 South Maryland Parkway and Silverado Ranch Parkway. Mention KSHP for 10% off in-store or use code KSHP online for 15% off. 
Hungry for the best barbecue in Las Vegas? Come out to the infamous barbecue and meat market, John Moles Meats and Roadkill Grill in Las Vegas. John Moles was featured on the Food Network's Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives. Now take home delicious meat selections for your grill, and while you're there, grab a bite of the best barbecue in Las Vegas. With two locations now at Tom and Gowan or on North Decatur, you're sure to find the perfect meats for your next barbecue or party. Find us online at johnmolemeats.com. At AR Heating and Air Conditioning, our main goal is to provide high-quality service without breaking the bank. From maintaining your HVAC units to fixing them when they are down, they are there for you. AR Heating and Air Conditioning offer reasonable prices, reliability, and professional service at a great value. For more information, go to fixmyac.net or call 702-646-4000. Beat the heat and call AR Heating and Air Conditioning today. Welcome to Hash House A Go Go, where we've been serving farm food and crafted cocktails for over two decades. Visit us for the full Hash House experience at any of our five Las Vegas locations. Hash House A Go Go is where old school meets new and gets twisted. We bring people together over good food and fun. Come in for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, and come hungry because our portions are huge. Visit us online to see our entire menu at hashhouseagogo.com. Hash House A Go Go. It's a Midwest thing, and there's nothing else like it. It's Open Road Radio, celebrating 25 years of Motorcycle Talk Radio. Every Monday night, right here at 6 p.m. on KSHP Radio, join industry veterans Gina Woods and Shannon Danslin and Penny FXR to talk motorcycle information, education, and entertainment. Powered by Full Throttle Law Firm, Monday nights at 6 p.m. right here on AM 1400. You can also check out their Facebook Live show at Open Road Radio on Facebook. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Jamie D Show, live on KSHP AM 1400 and 107.1 FM. If you're just now tuning in, we went over the news headlines of the day. We also talked about if relationships and marriages can actually be 50-50. And now we have Kurt Walker and Eric Hayes, founders of Built By, a community created to connect founders with one another, live in studio. Welcome in, guys. Yeah! How are you guys? Doing well. How are you guys doing today? We're doing great. This is Eric Harris. Yes, Eric Harris, and that's Kurt Walker. That's so right. welcome in. Yeah. Hey, absolutely. if you're just now tuning in again, we're live on KSHP AM 1400 and 107.1 FM. As well, we're live on our YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, and Facebook at The Jamie D Show. That's T-H-E-J-A-I-M-E-D-E-E-S-H-O-W. And the reason I tell you that is because Kurt wanted you to know who Eric was and who he was. <laughs> so let's get into the conversation. So, guys, you're the founders of Built By, which is a community created to connect founders with one another. Tell us exactly what that means. Yeah. So, my background's in funding. I've been a funder for over 17 years, a startup lender, uh, venture capital, and uh, venture debt. And I've come to realize, as has Eric, and he's a, he's a high end product manager over at Microsoft and beyond as a founder as well. Now, I'm going to explain why that's really important to all you tech founders in one second. What we've learned through the lens of technology and through funding companies is that there's a whole lot more that founders need than just capital and resources like software development, right? Now, product managers, a lot of you guys may not know what that is. That's the person that keeps your build of what you're creating at your company on track, Mm -hmm. making sure that what's being built is what's actually needed to be successful in the market. That's a great example of something outside of capital that is super critical when you're building a, a, a business of any kind, you know? Okay. So what we've come to realize is that writing checks while awesome and something that we're still excited about and the technology we're building to streamline and simplify fundraising is certainly one of my focuses. But we believe the power of community is ab- absolutely something that everybody needs. And, you know, when you're building a, a, an entrepreneurial endeavor, an enterprise, you really have to have support that comes above and beyond Uh, what capital is. And that was the reason why it was super exciting when I met Eric and we had such a great shared vision. Uh, As community builders, we've done over 500 founder events, multiple communities. Okay. uh, And we've got some really cool stuff coming up this weekend, actually. That's the reason why we teamed up and said, we got to build something, you know, where that that's for us, you know, for Mm -hmm. founders and for funders built for us by us. That sounds like a great resource for those out there who are startups in in the tech community. Can you explain to us in more detail, though, what does it mean to be in a founder community? Yeah. 
so I'll take that one. Um, I mean, as a founder, one of the biggest things, and there's a lot of people out there, like who you have on your team is super important. Um, you can go out there with A-listers, you can go out there with C-listers, and the difference will be how fast you can get to where you want to go. Mm -hmm. And being surrounded with other founders, you also learn from each other. And it's a collective share of knowledge. And that is something you can't do by, by yourself in an isolated mm -hmm. manner. And being a part of a founding community, that's what makes it important. Like as a founder myself, like I've learned every time I've talked to other founders, mm -hmm. even if I'm you know, talking to them about product market fit or customer validation, or even like, hey, how, where are you at in your stage and getting capital? I'm learning from them of what they're doing, what mistakes they're making. I don't want to make those as well. And they're learning from me. And that comes through a community and being in a shared collective that's powerful. And that's something that you don't necessarily see with a lot of things out there today with groups. They're just going after you. How do I get you capital? How do I get you onto the market? But how do I actually help you as a founder? And then also with a lot of companies failing, mental health is hugely important. Mm -hmm. How do you manage that? And as a collective, again, we're tackling all of that from the founder perspective. There's capital, there's investment, there's relationships, but founders, they're the ones actually doing the thing. So how do we help them be successful? You're yeah, and, facts. and you've got things like, you know, people don't understand that that product market fit, that validation. They think they got a great idea, but they don't understand the execution is the challenging part or making sure that there's actual customers that want that or understanding what's your fundraising fluency. Do you understand that there's there's a lot more to fundraising than people realize? There's all these different capital types. Where are they hiding out? How do I create alignment with them? Right. Then there's what we call like pitch Kung Fu, which is do you actually understand how to actually pitch? Do you mm. understand that you're always pitching for capital? You're always pitching for customers and clients. You're always pitching for recruiting to have the best team members you possibly can have. And so that's the reason why community becomes this really powerful vehicle when you've got a lot of like-minded people that are also in the fight. They're also in the journey. They're also moving towards their purpose and this obsession that they have with solving a problem in the world where they've got the entrepreneurial disease, you know? Yeah. You spin facts. Talk to us about how you're able to assure people that even though they may not be in the tech industry or they may not be in the same field as some of those founders, they can still gain from being in these communities. Absolutely. I mean, it's one of those things uh, I actually had a conversation with a guy earlier this week looking at uh, he bought a warehouse and he's looking at doing a pizzeria as an example. It's a partner on a different deal. Right. And I'm like, hey, he, and he had no idea. I've actually helped open three Chick-fil-A's. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, he had no nice. idea. Okay, so Eric. completely different. Right. Mm -hmm. But no, very well. I understand how to build a team, how to go in and actually start up a, a restaurant how to actually get that staffed and managed and how to turn it into a profit. But that's in a completely different sector, like pizzeria and Chick-fil-A, right. completely different, right? right? But they're still in the same. Also applying both of those customer service, you know, how does that work? You want to treat your customers right. You want them coming back, your patrons coming back. How do you do that? And so being in the community, that elevates that conversation where normally you would have that in isolation, but in sharing the fact, hey, I'm doing this thing, this is what's happening, et cetera, that allows that conversation to happen. And I say more, community, but it's like a tribe where everyone has a shared goal to one, being successful, being good at what they're doing and also making impact yep. in the communities they're in because that's the ultimate shared goal. How you achieve that from founder to founder might be differently, mm -hmm. but the shared goal of, Hey, we want to do this. We don't want to like waste time doing it. We don't want to waste resources doing it. That means that everyone's driving in a similar direction mm -hmm. and how you do that can help each other along the way. And that's you know, power. Community. And another thing is we're also building a data company. So we're understanding that founders have similar uh, backgrounds or different backgrounds or different needs or whatever. So we survey them first, understand really who they are, mm -hmm. where they're going, what do they need next? And then pair and matching them to other founders, other vetted vendors, or even to capital and other resources is literally the design of really what's being built over at Built By. Okay, you guys are saying some very interesting things. However, I wanna get into your true experience. You guys talked about your bio, which is awesome. 20 mm -hmm. years, founders, opened stuff up that you wouldn't ever never know that you opened up. That's beautiful, but did you guys go to college? <laughs> and be honest. <laughs> This is important to our audience. No, this is this is funny. Like my perspective of education is a little bit different. Uh, so I did. I, I originally went to college out of high school, um, did a couple of things with the military, mm -hmm. and then I actually left college. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not traditional in a sense. Like I understand That's experience. Like yeah. Like it's both. And I say this because I've also sat on two school boards and I've also worked with community economic development, pushing educate like post-secondary education so okay. it's not i'm not dismissing it it's just the value of like when and how it's used and where it's placed okay. um but for me yeah so i i did end up going back and graduating nothing's wrong with and that. so it's you're still it, successful though but it, hey, it's, it's one of those things where leverage what you have and what you know and college i would say college is not necessarily for everyone you're, you're not wrong 
but for those that use it and that go through it, use it well and do something with it. Facts. So, uh, I have a pretty strong opinion on, on this. Jim Rohn said, if you uh, want to make a living, get an education. You want to make mm. a fortune, you self-educate yourself. So I went to school for four years, largely a waste of time. I don't know a single billionaire or anybody else that I've been working with or anybody on any projects that cares where I went to school or what I actually did or if I had a degree. Because in okay. the world of entrepreneurship, what, what matters is can you produce value and solve problems for other people mm -hmm. that they're willing to exchange money for? Okay. And that's not something that they teach you at school. I'm not saying that school is a waste of time, but I do believe in general that this school is becoming less and less of a return on investment mm -hmm. for the cost. And I believe that if, if you're driven like me, I mean, I read 120 books a year. Nobody's pushing wow. me to read my ass off. I've learned entirely new learning styles. I speed listen. I do all the, you know, my YouTubes at three, four X in order to really absorb information because I'm like, I'm highly motivated to grow for just the sake of growth, pushing myself to be the best I can be and deeply, deeply, deeply understanding the problems that I want to solve around capital innovation and community impact. So for me, I think if you're going to rely on a university to become an entrepreneur, that's not a good plan because okay. there's no, there's no school that's going to teach you entrepreneurship. Okay. And I appreciate you both for being very honest with me because mm -hmm. a lot of times we see that people are either pushing go to school or be an entrepreneur and just, you're right. It's a mix. You can choose whatever path you want to go into. You're right, you can do both. And you you can also be successful in either path. Mm -hmm. I do want to ask you though, Kurt, Kurt, excuse me. What degree did you get? I didn't get a degree. Oh, you didn't get a degree. Oh, so you didn't finish. Okay. I'm makes like sense. Six credits shy or something. Oh, really? And ask me how much I care. So you, you wouldn't yeah. go back. Hey, listen, no. I appreciate if it. If I were to go back, it would be highly about a skill set that I think would be valuable, which is this. I would go back and get a JD so that I could do contracts and all that because I deal with contracts mm. all the time. And we spend a lot of time with our attorneys, mm. especially as, as venture capital guys that allocate money to deals and all that. I think that would be fun. I would never practice law. Okay. Okay. Let's well, well, spend something on that. Like when you said, like what degree? Mm -hmm. Um, I originally graduated with my BS. Uh, oh, and I, it's a dual degree. So you do have a degree? I, yeah. So I, I do have. You a said degree. you did some college. I did. <laughs> I did. Eric, I, now I'm confused. I, went, you said, no, I did no, some. No, college. I did. I did some. I went Boy. back. I actually went back. Okay. And, so I, I, I had to like. So the path of it was, I was actually working in Bank of America at the time, um, and talking to a VP, he was like, "You, we're not like just the way it is. We're not bringing you into that without paper." Mm. And I was like, "Great, so I have a choice." Right do I go get the paper to participate in the system or what? And so I was like, fine, I'll do that. Uh, through that process, I realized I didn't like that system. Okay. And that was just for me. So I I did it because I was already committed, did it, went and continued doing some other different things with, uh, I mean, I worked for NASA and did some things with the army. Dude, what, what haven't you done? I, I've done? I've done a few things. I've done what a few things. It's fine. But <laughs> do you I, want I went, an MBA or do you want an MBA like a massive so, bank so I, right. I, so I literally said, I'm not paying for my next education, mm. but I knew that I was worth it. Okay. Well, I went back after six years and said, I'm going to pay like, and I pay for an MBA. Okay. I did. But I didn't pay for the traditional MBA. Mm. It was more self-taught online, et cetera. Okay. But I have an executive MBA now. Okay, that makes sense. But it was it was on my terms right. and how I wanted to do it. Okay. And it was a whole lot less expensive. More power to you, Eric. And the reason I ask is because I want a lot of people who are listening in now who are looking to you all as resources and, and want to be like you as they continue on in their journey that there are so many different ways to get to where you all are, to get to where you want to be. I'm going to ask you guys some questions about startups and funding. Mm -hmm. However, are my audience is tough and, and they, they, they truly want to know how can they trust you and, and believe what you have to say? What makes you both credible in this sure. space? Sure. So uh, tomorrow we have Tech Alley here, downtown Vegas with all the tech founders. I run the Who's Got My Money Funding you know, panel. Mm -hmm. So basically everything that we share is, is really like, go and check the facts, go and check the history, go and look at the transactions, go and look at how WeWork was funded, Airbnb was funded, whatever. All of this stuff is publicly available. What's unique is going to be the perspective of the framework of you should not be raising all of your money if you're starting an entrepreneurial business from just venture capital or from angel money. So what we're trying to tell people is there's a bunch of different capital sources out there and they're just not aware of, of where it is. What does that capital stack look like we call this capital sequencing uh, the other thing is is i write about capital every single day on linkedin and that's something that they can go and check out 
And look, you're an entrepreneur. You're in the driver's seat. You need to, you need to, your education needs to rise as you continue to go through your journey where you become wise about when do I use this kind of marketing to acquire customers? As a, as a guy that understands capital, the capital spectrum, when do I know to, to play this debt card versus this partnership card on the equity side? Do I understand the different options available to me? Do I understand that it's just like a real estate transaction where if I can talk somebody into selling me a building for $1, you got yourself a deal. It's the same thing when you're raising capital. A human being is deciding to exchange capital for ownership, debt, or some desired shared outcome that they want that you can produce. Mm. And so what that means is it comes down to your ability to be a deal maker, both in the pitch and in them buying you and, and what you're building and their belief in you, as well as what's the transaction look like for them? What's the upside? Okay. So I actually put it back on them and say, look, listen to what I have to say. Go back and do your do your checking, go check history, and then we'll have a conversation about it. And I think that we're going to both be pretty happy with that situation. Okay. Let's teach people to fish instead of saying you need to come to us for the total source of knowledge. Okay. There's a, there's a word in, in the startup and ecosystem called uh, due diligence. Okay. You always got to do your due diligence. Okay. Real quick, do me a favor and, and start that over again. Uh, I was okay. There we go. Yeah, I was saying there's a there's a world in the startup ecosystem called due diligence. Okay. Investors do due diligence on founders and on the companies they want to invest in. But I say this all the time. Founders, you should always do due diligence on anyone that you're working with. Always. It's it's the like it's the most important thing. If you don't know who you're working with, then why are you working with them? Mm -hmm. It's a relationship. At the end of the day, it's human capital is the biggest thing. Who are you working with? And first, do the due diligence on yourself. Just go there. Back. Get yourself together. And then from there, know how to interact and operate with other people. Um, when it comes to like, why should people listen to me? I mean, do your due diligence. Look at what I talk about. Look what I say and look what I've done. And if you like it, follow. If you okay. don't go find somebody else. You I'm should okay also never it. leave like the two, you know, the two C's to chance, which is your capital you should also always be understanding capital and you should always be understanding your customer acquisition, which okay. is your marketing side of things. So definitely be looking to great people that are out there sharing content that have a great track record. But I also think you know, look, a lot of this isn't rocket science. Yeah. You know, if you take what somebody's saying and it, and it makes sense to you, then you go and you compare that in history or you go look up, you know, how some of the stuff makes sense. I think it all starts to come together, yeah. you know, and I think people that are in the game for the long term, they operate that way. They communicate that way. They share things like, you know, in my case, I have nothing to sell somebody. I'm not trying to fund your company. I'm trying to tell you how to fund your own company. Mm, yeah. Listen, I feel like I could trust you guys already. <laughs> And it's relationship at the end of the yeah. day. And and I mean, when you get to a level of competence in what you know and what you're doing, you do communicate from that. But a lot of people pull it off as being arrogant, et cetera. It's like, yeah. no, at the same time. You know, you, you know your ish. We yeah. know your well, ish. Well, the ish is like tra trenches and transactions. Right. Have you yeah. been in the trenches? Have yeah. you actually right. done the events? Have you actually built the community? One person pushing that school bus up a hill. Mm -hmm. And have you actually, so for example, I, I can't stand when VCs can't talk about the mistakes they made. Right. Like how many bad transactions have you done? How many founders did you think were going to make it, didn't yeah. make it? Or how right. many founders wouldn't, weren't coachable? Or how many mistakes did, did I make when I was raising funds or putting money into deals? And he's got his own set of experiences as well to share. But I just look at it like people are honest and authentic mm. when they've had real experience because there are no, like one of my VC partners likes to say, there's two kinds of people in the entrepreneurial world. Those that, are, that have been sued and those that are going to be sued. Okay, right? so listen, like, you're, you're talking about it. We, we, we do have a few minutes left, so I want to get into these other topics. So yeah. we got to be real quick about this. Talk to us about what it means to be a startup. Oh, gosh. Uh, you, Kirk, you take that one because so I mean that's a big. You're, that's you're a big birthing project. something from 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 nothing. You know that's what yeah. entrepreneurship means. Comes from the French word to create something from nothing. But really, the difference between a startup and a small business, if we're going to be technical, mm -hmm. is a small business is a business that could have a couple of employees, maybe gets to a couple of million, maybe ten million, fifteen million, maybe even twenty million in revenue, but really doesn't have scale to it where. It has hundreds of employees. It has enterprise value where venture capital guys are going to get involved and infused a bunch of equity capital. So the design of the businesses, the timeframes of the businesses, the stress, the demands of the businesses are wildly different. Small businesses outnumber startups probably 100 to 1 in the United States. So Silicon Valley style stuff, that's a startup and they're all over the United States. Whereas small business could be, I'm doing a laundromat, I'm doing a, a window washing business. And, and sometimes guys, these businesses aren't sexy, but they make cash flow. Right. Whereas startups are very challenging. They're not for everybody. So wait, give me an example of what a startup is. Like, cause you, when, you, when you said startup, and a lot of times when you hear that word, you think tech. 
So what when you when you see startup, what, the, so what, the what business model mm -hmm. of it, the way it makes money, the way it acquires clients, the cash requirements, the team requirements, the level of talent, the level of experience, the level of delayed gratification, all of that is amped up dramatically from a small business. Mm -hmm. Okay. So talk to me about how do you help people get funding? Got it. Okay. And we, remember, we have a few minutes left. So yeah. So so look, uh, understanding that there's thirty to 60 different capital types. So let me break it down really simple. It's understanding your options when it comes to public and government funds. That's your grants. And mm -hmm. that's anything that started with taxpayer money first. Let's be clear. Number two is understanding your debt options. There's four major debt options, collateral based, contract based, cash flow based, and credit based. That means mm -hmm. how is it being underwritten? What are you bringing to the table that helps somebody to make a decision to fund you? Number three is your Cash flow base options. This means what does your income look like? Your W-2, the taxes from the business, et cetera, et cetera. And then number four is going to be your credit base. What credit are you bringing to the table? Then you've got equity options. Equity options is angel investment, venture capital investment. They're giving you money. You're giving them partnership in your business. And last but not least is something we don't have time for, but certainly you can check out the Who's Got My Money uh, YouTube uh, videos that we have from the Who's Got My Money sessions at Tech Alley mm -hmm. is we talk about revenue and how you can approach groups to get revenue from them that's in the form of an investment. It's not equity, it's not debt. Mm -hmm. And they write you checks because they believe in a shared outcome that you're creating alignment for. It's kind of a complex topic, but when it comes down to funding, it's really simple. It's knowing your options. Most people don't. They think of everything as binary, equity or debt. And then they're like, I need capital. Here's the, here's the honest truth. Most people are going to build a small business and it means they need to understand one thing. How am I going to create alignment with customers that want to pay me so that my customers cash flow me and help produce profit into the business? Yeah. That's mm -hmm. the thing that most founders don't want to hear, don't want to understand. Small business owners, it's absolutely critical. Most of you guys don't need to go out and raise money. Mm. You just need great marketing and understand how to acquire clients. And one last thing I'll say before Eric Ooh. speaks is, do not come to anyone until you've talked to a hundred different people about your idea and concept, not family, not your mother. And especially if they've given you dollars, that's how you know you really have something because in that data collection situation, you know the offer, you know the pricing, you know the snags, you know the way to communicate it, you know how to actually communicate that offer. Most people start pitching before they even know that stuff. Mm. So you need to go talk to clients and customers and leads before you try to go pitch it to somebody that's actually going to give you capital because okay. they're, you're going to hear all the concerns in that 100 conversations. Okay. Yeah. I, I just just on short on that one, I mean, he, he wrapped it in. It's... Uh, we help people by helping them understand how to approach the idea, validate that, mm -hmm. get confirmation from customers, refine that, understand where you are in the process and what money you need. That's all education. And through that, determine your path of success. Okay. Like That's what we do. Okay. And the community is built around breaking the barriers of how to educate, inform, share, and actually exercise and do that in practice. Okay. So can I ask you guys both a personal question? Because this is something that's been asked by a lot of the audience out there because they they want to they want to know your true success stories. Are you guys millionaires? Yes. You, you know it's funny. <laughs> Who said yes like that? I could you guys both opened your mouth that once and I was like, Who? <laughs> you said that so confidently, Kurt. I mean, I, I knew personally already, but still, go ahead, Eric. So, what say? Um, I, my experience, I've actually made a million and lost it. You lost it? Well, I mean, that's that's, that's a, something that happens story, to that's almost all of, entrepreneurs. I've, I've, I've lost it too. before. I've made a million and I've lost a million. Oh wow! But I'm making a million again. Wow! So. And I once mean, you do it once, you, you know how to do, to do it again. So, so you're, you're saying, so would you guys say that you're able to help other startups, small businesses, and just individuals oh, absolutely. do the same thing? Absolutely. Yes. I'm doing, I mean, so the community we're doing is, it is in itself that. So yeah. if you want to see the numbers, you want to like, look at the track record, look at what we're doing. Okay. okay. I mean, it, it speaks for itself. Y'all better, y'all better be big dogs and talk y'all stuff. Thank you both so much for absolutely. coming onto the show. It was an absolute pleasure. Here's a little ring. That, 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 was turnt, that was turnt. I want you all to tell the audience. How could they find you and support you? So it's it's Kurt K U R T Walker on Twitter, and then I'm on LinkedIn, Kurt R Walker on LinkedIn, and then we have B Y L T B Y Built By .com. Come tell us about your business, who you are, where you're going, and what you need next, and let's see how we can help you. There's it's it's free to come join, and then we have events tomorrow night. We have uh, we have a couple of ten bedroom houses that we've devoted to entrepreneurship mm. here in Vegas that we're going to be doing in the Valley and beyond. Those are called venture houses. That's where Built By does its events. And so we, we welcome you guys to come join us. We have 150 entrepreneurs. We have exited founders, VCs flying in tomorrow night to come join us. So whatever we don't know, we got people that know. Okay. And so yeah. that's where you crowdsource that clarity together. So built by B-Y-L-T, 
by.com for that. And then Eric, uh, for me, the easiest way to do it uh, is go to LinkedIn. Connect with me is E Harris. Oh, four. Uh, it's really simple. Go LinkedIn. You're looking at E Harris. Oh, four. It's a way to connect with me. Start there. We're also building out a community. So that stuff's coming in soon. That's the easiest way to connect and also follow me. I'll ask you to do that because I mean, I'm connected with a lot of people and that's part of what I want to do in the communities. Super connector. Mm. Help connect each other to other people like minded and make this thing happen. You want to know life. what's cooler than saying that we've had a certain level of success is what? helping other people do that and having yeah. other people say because of the community, mm -hmm. we've become millionaires. Love so, it. Love it. So our founder actually, funders, baby. Founder funders. That's love our it. that's our, our North Star. Love it. Yeah. I gotta ask one more quick question because I gotta ask it. The girls want to know, are you guys single? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Very. It's not a matter of being single. It's where I'm heading. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Well, and hey, so, you, you heard it here. You heard it here. It's where you had. We, 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 listen, I have, I have to have you guys back on the show. We are out man. of time. This okay. has been an amazing experience with you all here at the Jamie D Show live on it's KSHP AM 1400 at 107.1 FM. Hey, guys, come back. We're here every Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. until 11 a.m. PST. So make sure to see us this upcoming Monday. I'll see you guys next week. Appreciate it. Stomach. Hi, it's Kelly the Cookie Lady from Mooch's Munchies. Our dogs had super sensitive tummies and I needed to find a low-fat treat that wouldn't give them gas or other issues. Most of the treats on the market